Well, hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to another day. It's time to talk mules and donkeys and a little bit of cruising. We'll get to that in a few minutes. My name is Dave. This is Steve Edwards. And Steve, you are not by yourself today. Why don't you tell us who you got with you today, my friend? I got the David Pingali, maker of Ask, Tell, and, and Demand Come Along Coffee. That's the Come Along Coffee that's been selling like, well, hot coffee beans off of the Mule Ranch yeah. website, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So where are, you guys, where are you guys at right now? Manchester, Georgia. We're at his home in Manchester, Georgia. Oh, I should have known better. I, looking at that shirt and that hat right there, it's a dead giveaway for where you are. Yep. I'm now official member of the Manchester Fire Department. That's I got my shirt. There it is right here. Yeah. I got my hat and we got pictures to prove it. You're all fixed up. Well, I, you know what? I'll get to those pictures in a second. It was about three years ago. A common friend, uh, a mutual friend that Steve and I had, as a matter of fact, the friend who introduced Steve and I together. We hadn't seen each other for a while, and Michael and I were hanging out, and he goes, you still working with Steve? I said, yes, I am. I said, check this out. And the first video he saw was Steve. It was a thumbnail of Steve sitting there in full fire, fire outfit. outfit. He had no idea. He goes, what is Steve doing in a fire, fire outfit? I said, you have missed quite a bit, my friend. You've been gone a little bit too long. I said, Steve is a volunteer firefighter now. And he is volunteering for the Queen Valley Fire Department. And so often during our broadcast now, you'll hear the go off. And uh, and so, Steve, you actually got to meet the fire department there in Manchester. How about it? Yes, this is one of the crews. And uh, if you look to my right, that tallest guy, he is the fire chief. He is seven foot two inches. Okay, you could have had fun with that right there. You could have said, he's nine feet tall, and that makes me seven foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guy next to me to my right, between the two of us, he's a captain, and he's six foot two inches. You know? and then, then it goes on from there. Now, they're trying to find out if he can be in the Guinness Book of Records for the tallest firefighter. I think he might have it. Yeah. That's yeah. that's pretty tall right there. Hey, that's a great question for our friends who are watching today. Is anybody watching in the Guinness Book of World Records or are you related to someone who is? Put that in the comment section. Real quick, I got ahead of myself. I do want to welcome you here. Every week, uh, Steve and I get together to talk mules and donkeys. This week is no exception. Today, we're talking about uh, mules with our friend David Pengelly. But this is, if this is your first time ever hanging out for us, know that usually it's just me and Steve taking live questions. Well, with Steve being in Georgia, we decided rather than doing nothing, we'd record something ahead of time. So right now you are actually watching something that we recorded previously before Steve travel and David traveled to the uh, American Mule and Bluegrass Festival in Shelby, Tennessee. So by the time you see that, that will have gone by. It will have been a huge success. There would have been you know, all sorts of amazing things that happen, but we're going to make amazing things happen today. And really, there's only three things you need to do to be a part. Number one, share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like today. That's how we get to know you. That's how we get to know where you're at in the world. Get a little taste of what it's like to be in your city, in your town, and uh, and just know that you're here. Steve and I, we can talk whenever we want. We can talk with David whenever we want. Uh, but right now, we want to know that you're here. So share your name, where you're watching from, what the weather is like. The second thing is that you ask any and every mule or donkey question that you have. And you might say, well, you guys aren't live today. Are you gonna? You can't answer it. Eh, wrong answer. We're going to answer it. Next time Steve and I do a live q and I'm going to be going back through all of the questions that have come in today and previous weeks, and we're going to be answering those. So any and every mule or donkey question, go ahead, put it in the chat section. We'll get to that, and we'll get you the answer you need, because there's nothing more that we enjoy than seeing you get out there, gain the trust of your animals, and get results when you train. You shouldn't be frustrated. You should be flourishing, and we want you to experience it that. Third thing is that you share the broadcast, and oh boy, this is going to be a good one to share, because Steve, people got the idea and I don't know where they got this, but they got the idea that they need to be 20 years equine pro. They need to be out there 
apprenticing left and right. They need to be working with mules every day. They need to be working with donkeys every day if they're going to train. They think that just because they went out and they got themselves a new animal that they don't have any way to train. And well, that's just not the case, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and guys like uh, David here, uh, you know, it's, uh, he's, it's, it's, it's part of your DNA. There's something about going out there, smelling that mule, touching that mule, saddling that mule up and going for a ride. And Dave, he showed me pictures of, of a couple of years ago with him as a kid riding a pony and uh and and the different and and, and riding this donkey now yes. <laughs> dave tell us about your meetup with the donkey well i had always wanted a donkey and my dad we lived on a very big farm but my dad was very frugal he would not buy me a donkey but there was a farmer down the road who had one so we went and borrowed the donkey now that donkey i i just love that donkey uh, I didn't have a saddle, so I rode the donkey bareback. And as we all know, donkeys built a little downhill. And this donkey, he would let me ride him for about 30 feet, and then he would just twitch, and I would go on the ground. And then we'd go another 50 feet, and I would go on the ground. And this went on for a long time. I still love that donkey, but all of a sudden, I stopped riding it. And my dad one day said, if you're not going to ride that donkey, we're going to take it back to the owner. And I said, uh, okay, I'm not going to ride them anymore. And so we had trailers and trucks and all kinds of ways to move that donkey. But my dad said, uh, you wanted them, you ride them home. So it was about two miles or more down to where I got that donkey from. And my dad would not <coughs> truck it or trailer it down there. So my mother followed me in the car. And I rode that donkey all the way back to where I got him from. Well, that was pretty kind of a long ride because we'd go about a hundred feet and he'd throw me off. And then I get back on and we go another hundred feet and he'd throw me off. And we did that for, I don't know how long it took to get back to that guy's farm, but that was the end of my donkey ride. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. So the way that that happens out here for, for the city folk where we don't got the livestock is they want you to learn how to drive a stick shift. So the parents will just drop off the stick shift and they'll say, figure out how to get your way home. About every 50 seconds or not, you stall out. And then you stall out. And then you stall out. And at the end, though, it's a little bit different because, you know, you're a teenager. You really want a car so you can get around. So you figure out a way. But that's great. Um, and so that was your first experience with a donkey uh, those years ago. Right. But I never lost my love for donkeys or mules. Well, in that second day, yeah, you know how I, all the times that he got bounced off and everything, he didn't quit. He, it, it's his DNA, and that's what so many mule and donkey owners have. It's I, I look at how many people we've talked to that have never owned a donkey or mule before, you know, and they hear you know all these stories. Well, now here's a guy here that's flat been through, been there, done that, and the donkey ride would have made a lot of people quit, but he stuck with it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what folks have started to, you know, we've talked, Steve, you and I, about how, you know, back in the 90s, early 2000s, you would be traveling all across the country doing clinics and expos, and some would be larger than others, and some would be more well attended than others, but it was all good stuff, and it was all making a difference for people. And then all of a sudden, we start utilizing the internet, and boom. Not only are we getting in front of more people, meaning more education, more people learning, more people discovering how to do this, but we're finding that more and more people from all sorts of different backgrounds, they're able to actually do the training themselves, especially when they've got it just in their DNA, when that, that equine love is there, that passion for the animal is there. Uh, you're capable of doing a lot of things, not to mention when you got a come along rope in your hand. Uh, but that's really what we hope that you're able to take away from today's conversation is that, hey, no matter where you are right now and where you are at in your mule or donkey journey, you can do this. There's tools out there. There's education out there. Folks ask Steve all the time, hey, I'm thinking about getting my first mule. What should I be doing? Education, education, education. So good news is you're in the right place. So um, that was your first experience with uh, with a donkey, David. How many years was it until you got back in the saddle, so to speak? 
Well, I we we had a big farm, so I always had horses to ride, ponies and horses. And uh, we also, because uh, we lived on a big dairy farm, we showed cattle uh, all over New York State, upstate New York and western New York. Uh, back then, uh, they might still, every county in western New York had a county fair. And uh, we would travel the fair circuit with our string of uh, show cattle uh, pretty much all summer long. And uh, one uh, time, one uh, county fair, uh, we were showing cattle there, and there was a uh, fella came in for one of the grandstand shows. They all had these big shows at the uh, most of those old county fairs had racetracks, and they would uh, have you know stock car races and trotting races and all this. And a fellow showed up for one of those shows one night by the name of Jerry Lippiot from Salem, Ohio. It was Jerry Lippiot and his racing mules, and he had a school bus with six mules on it. And all the salties were on the top of the school bus. And he would go from fair to fair with this grandstand show. Well, he came in a few days early to this county fair where I was showing our, our cattle. And so I went, uh, you know, love, still love mules and love long ears. So I would go down to the stables every morning and just chat with them. And then he would hook in the morning, he would hook some of these mules up and drive them around the, the racetrack. And after a few days, he let me actually uh, drive one of these racing mules in a sulky around the track. And uh, once again, there's my love for mules. And uh, it came uh, show day for his, his show in front of the grandstand. And uh, one of the dignitaries from town was on one of the sulkies. And uh, anyway, they had a little bit of an accident and the dignitary got pitched off onto the track and the mule took off and ran around the track with the other mules. And uh, so anyway, they collected everybody. And then uh, Jerry said to me, because I was just a kid that I was probably 11, 12 years old. He says, get in that sulky and show people that it's not dangerous. He didn't, I think he didn't want to pay the, the lawsuit or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so I jump in the sulky and I'm having a great time. And uh, we went this next heat. I, I, you know, raced the mule. Well, you know, that stuck with me all these years. I just love those racing mules. As a matter of fact, I want to, uh, some of his... Uh, his, his grandkids are still alive. I want to get with him and talk to him more about that, see if I can get some of those pictures of him with his mules on the school bus and his uh, racing experience is really cool. That was the, the next time around. How did, so did you, how did we first make the connection with you? Uh, was it through the live stream or was it in a clinic or an expo or does it go back further than that? I'm not really sure. I'm not, I really don't know. I, I, well, we went, uh, our veterinarian, let me think, our veterinarian uh, that we had a large farm, he had a lot of horses he used to drop off at our, our farm because he was a trader and, and things. And uh, he liked mules. And a friend of uh, ours brought a mule in from uh, uh, New Mexico. Uh, a lot of horse guys uh, rode her. And uh, our veterinarian actually told me about this mule. And that, and that was my next mule. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly how Steve and I connected, whether, whether I heard you on the, on this or through the grapevine. I don't know. But anyway, we got connected. He might've called me and asked me a question like so many of our other clients, you know? I did. Yeah. Some, yeah. Somewhere along the way, I got the phone number and did call and we started chatting about, well, actually that was my, I had bought. Uh, I had a mule for 20 years. I and Steve and I've talked about this. And I didn't treat her like a mule. Sadly, I treated her like a horse. And she was so good. I didn't know what I had. And so when she passed away, I was looking for another mule. And I think that's how I made the connection with you because I found one on the internet. And I called you up and I said, "Would you take a look at this mule and see if it's what I need?" And uh, once again, he said, I'm not going to tell you whether yay or nay, but it looks decent. So I put, <laughs> and I got lucky. I got a really, really fine mule, but uh, but it was just by chance. Let's go back to what you said. Uh, you said that you you had a mule, but you treated her like a horse. Um, that that might be confusing for some folks listening. Tell us a little bit about what you mean by that. 
Well, sadly, I wish I had her back and knew what I know now because of Steve. Uh, I just, because I'd had horses my whole life, uh, I had the wrong saddle. Uh, I uh, had the wrong bit. Um, let me see. Um, I did everything wrong because I rode her like a horse. Uh, she put up with me. She was amazing. We team penned with her. Uh, you could shoot off of her, rope off of her. We took her in parades. Uh, but it was just because she was so good and, and it had nothing to do with me. Uh, but I, uh, I rode her like a horse. I, uh, I rode her with a saddle with just one cinch, a Western saddle. Uh, I had just, uh, who knows what kind of a bit I was using and, uh, you know, no britching. Um, I just did everything wrong and she put up with me for 20 years. Is that the one picture you show me of that meal with all the fat pockets? And everything? No, that's not, that was, the, that was the last, that was the one I gave away. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Was no so, um, so you, you seem like a nice guy. You seem like someone who would treat his animals right. So you didn't have probably much idea that you were no, doing I things. I just her, but I just did everything. You know, well, I kind of did, I guess, unknowingly, but I never, you know, I never you were, heard her. You were, do, you were kind to her according to what you knew. What right. was it that, of course, you know, maybe it was when you first talked with Steve, but what was it that kind of opened your eyes to be like, well, I had this amazing animal and I did it this way. Why would I do it any different in the future? Well, I, somewhere along the way, when I started, Steve has made me feel real bad because now I realize all the bad things I did back then, you know, <laughs> but now I really think about it, I, I feel so bad about that girl. And, uh, but, uh, actually, I don't know, I guess it was when I was just getting my, my next mule because the, the, that particular mule, finally, she got so old, we had to put her down. Uh, so I was looking for another one, and that's when I guess I made the connection with Steve, called him up, and I said, I, I found this mule on the Internet. What do you think about her? And uh, he said, well, it looks to be, you know, a, a good mule, but he wasn't going to make a commitment. He didn't say buy her or don't buy her. Yeah. And, uh, but I went and did. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, Dave. Uh, how, how, long, how, long did, how old was that mule when you bought her? She was... You had her nine for 20 years. But yeah, no, the, no, this one only had three years. The, the one, one you had, had for 20 oh, years. Oh, the one I had for, she was six when I bought her. Six when you bought her. Yeah. So in New Mexico. And you had her for 20 years. Right. So she died at 26. Yeah. So when, what, what was, what was her background like at six years old? Uh, she was a quarter mule, uh, came out of New Mexico. Uh, she was 4'2 and 14'2. Uh, and um, she was six years old and she was just trained very, very well. She neck brain, backed up, side pass. She did everything. She'd been, she was a real good ranch mule yeah. when I got her. And the thing of it was, the only reason I got her was uh, one of my horse people, uh, there was a whole clan of them here, uh, had wanted a mule. So they somehow got a hold of her. All the horse guys rode her, but she wasn't quite fast enough and mules were kind of a, you know, they're horse guys. And yeah. so they didn't really want her. And I saw her and I had to have her. So uh, this is going back a long time ago. But um, the, the, they were asking $1,500 for her. And should I tell them the story with Susanna? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so 1500 So I, I mentioned this to my wife. We had horses now. We had a horse farm. And I told my wife, this is $1,500. She said, this is insane. I said, no, but I really want this mule. And I had ridden her a few times and at other folks' houses. And so uh, we finally got her home and uh, I had her tied up and I went saddle on her and everything was going really well. Uh, Suzanne was, look, my wife Suzanne was looking out her office window at me and I got in the saddle and the mule Im immediately threw me on the ground. <laughs> And so my wife is freaking out and she's about ready to take that mule back to where we got her from. But uh, that was the beginning of a long, wonderful relationship, though. That never happened again. We got along great ever, wow. ever, ever since that moment. But uh, it could have been the end of my mule riding right there if my wife had, had anything to say about it. So here's one of the keys, Dave. You hear this mule with this super disposition. You know, that's the number one thing I tell everybody look for disposition but what what did he have 
that first uh, three to four years was working on a ranch, working on cattle, having a job and building a foundation. Like he said, she had a good neck rein on her. So that cowboy was, you know, had a pretty good hand. She side passed and turned on forehand, but she worked cows. It wasn't like a lot of people now today, they go to an auction, they buy a mule and, uh, and, and, and traders and sellers and this sort of thing. Then it comes back and you tell everybody how wonderful this meal is and, and people don't know what to look for. Well, him, uh, Dave happened to have, or, you know, was, was brought up around horses and stuff. They had horse farms. He knew what it was like to ride. And when I say ride, he was riding. He wasn't just setting. So he knew what side pass was. He knew what turn on the forehand was. And, and there's, there in life, you know, the guy had some experience. Uh, David had some experience when it come down to what they should do. But then when it comes to the mule, he didn't know quite what to do. You're talking 20 years ago, you know, things were just starting to roll, yeah. you know, and, and mules starting to become popular. But it happened to be just like you just heard him say, the mule pitched him and he still kept that mule for 20 years, you know? So when you got a love for these things, Dave, uh it it's 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 something it's it's powerful uh and 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 like, like right now uh david tells me he says find me a meal steve find me a meal and i've been i've been kind of looking and you know how i am a bit picky about that stuff but him being six foot tall he needs something at least 14 to uh and 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 that makes for a nice riding saddle mule but uh anyway well, the thing i want to point out here is this mule had a disposition that no matter what you did incorrect, he still stayed good. That's a one in a thousand mule. You you just you know a lot of people would say that that mule was well trained. Well, yes, he was well trained, but making mistakes can cost you. And some mules would overlook it, uh, which is what his mule does, even though he made some of the mistakes and stuff. Uh, you know, he made it through, uh, you know, sat in the wrong place. He didn't cripple a mule. He made it through, uh, overfeeding. He made it through. Did you shoot the mule? Never did. Never did shoot the mule. So everything that he, he says he did everything wrong and, 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 and that's kind of true. Yes, but he got through it somehow or another, but I want you to understand he's one in a thousand. You know, I've got a lot more stories that I can tell you of that he got pitched off, pitched off, pitched off. The mule had a, had a, uh, well, you, we've heard it a lot, broken down scapulas. Uh, we got bad feet, a lot of different things, but he happened to hit one just right for 20 years. And like David said, he didn't know what he had, you no. know? Now here's the other thing about this, Dave. Okay. It wasn't like David was in the saddle on his horse farm a lot. He actually had a job just like everybody else. You got to have a job. <laughs> to support your habits and his meal habit. He had a job. What kind of work was you doing, David? I'm an entertainer. I'm a singer, humorist, and, uh, uh, it done a lot of, you know, been in music since I was, I did radio and television when I was 15 and never looked back and it just, uh, carried on with music and uh, show business ever since. And, um, uh, so did 40 years of, uh, cruise ship work and, um, here we are. Okay. Now y'all hear that? 40 years of cruise ship work. One more thing saying one in a thousand mules. And could even be one in 5,000 mules because he would be gone for about a week or two every month. So I was on about half the time I was home. Yeah. So. so it wasn't like he was riding a mule all the time. It wasn't like he could spend the time with the mule and really get to know him. But he just happened to hit this mule that had a disposition that everybody wants. The mule had some of the right training that everybody wants, you know, and, and he, you know, it wasn't like he was a trainer that he could ride. Sure. But he didn't realize like the saddle going forward. You no. Know, did, did you have a breaching at all? No, 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 no. Just, just one cinch basically. Didn't even have a rear set. You hear that folks? Yeah. No, and I mean, and, 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 and I team pinned with her and rope with her. I did, I did everything wrong. Yeah. But she did have the disposition. I didn't know what I had. Yeah. And the other thing too, health wise, uh, you know, this mule never broke down in the front end. 
you know, and so many people we have, Dave, you know, you've, we've, we've talked to the people uh, with busted down scapulas and, and broke down in the, in the feet and this sort of thing. I've got one client we'll be talking to in the future that uh, he got to where his mule could hardly walk until he started getting shoeing and some corrective shoeing. So yeah, Dave had, you know, a, a, a one in, a, a one in 3,000, 5,000 even, you know, I mean, a rare, you know, but, uh, but then he started going on the internet and learning things and going from there. So let me ask you this then. You go, you, you connect with Steve. He starts making you feel real bad. You start thinking, okay, make, <laughs> see how I worked that in there. Starts making you feel bad. You start making some changes. What was that process like for you? Were you seeing, like, did it become apparent to you pretty quick? Like, oh oh my gosh, this is a difference maker, or did it take a little bit of time? Uh, well, it takes a little time because you don't learn everything Steve has to offer overnight. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a process. Uh, that, that's the fun of it, really, because you, you do a little bit today, learn a little bit tomorrow, make a mistake, go back and correct it. Um, I do remember, though, I had another mule before well, after the, the one we've just talked about, before we got into the next mule, uh, I bought it from a, a mule guy. I just saw, uh, showed, <laughs> showed Steve the a video of it the, anyway before I bought it. I uh, had to have this mule because the confirmation, the color and everything were just perfect. And I just love this mule. Got it home. And um, uh, I think it was the first time that I, after that first ride on that mule that I called Steve because uh, I got I. I put a, a smooth snaffle bit on this mule. Uh, once again, had a Western saddle with a single cinch. Uh, took it out for a ride because I had to ride. This is green, green, green mule, but I had to ride it immediately. Uh, took it out and uh, as we were going across this field at full tilt, I had that uh, mule's nose on my knee pulling his, his head around. And the thing is going 30 miles an hour straight ahead with his, I'm looking at his eyeball on my knee and uh, we went under a tree. And uh, so anyway, that was the first day, but I said, well, we'll correct this. So the next day I took him out in a big 60 acre field and thought we'd uh, walk around a little bit and get this thing straightened out. Uh, and I was telling Steve, the mule was a, just a regular size quarter mule. But I'll, as I'm riding it, the mule kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And then all of a sudden, I feel this mule under my seat about ready to explode. It's like a time bomb. And this, this mule was so green. So I, I took the mule back. And luckily, I didn't get killed on that mule and sent it back to the guy that I got it from. So uh, anyway, that's that was mule two. And that's when I think I called Steve. And then we started conversing and talking about different things. And I told him about that experience and he just laughed at me. And I didn't think it was very funny, but, but anyway, that's Steve? a story. No. He, he <laughs> killed me, but. Been in that that's... position many times. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. Um, man, there was something that you said. Um, shoot. I had a follow-up question. Maybe it'll come back to me. So, um, so one of the things, one of the myths that I'm hoping, uh, listening right now, folks you're hearing is that, um, nobody comes at this thing, not even Steve comes at this thing with the ability to get these animals to bend to their will right away. Yes, there's experience. Yes, there's the ability to look at signs. Yes, there are tools that you can use, but you know, take it from me. I've been to a bunch of Steve's clinics over the last 10 years You'll see plenty of time. Matter of fact, do a search on YouTube. Look for trouble picking up the rear foot. And you're going to see 12 minutes straight of an animal not doing what Steve is telling him to do. So nobody comes at this thing with, oh, I've got it all figured. Well, at least nobody smart comes at it with, I've got it all figured out. I know everything. I've seen everything. And this is what you have to do. No, there's a direction that you take things and you apply. I like what you said, David. No, it, you see it over time. Because there's no way that you could learn it and apply it all within, you know, one week or one month. 
you know, much less a year. It, it takes time to build upon it. And I'm thinking right now, I think of uh, Dave O'Brien, Steve, who's got a, a mule that he's been doing lots of incremental work with. And, and it's Dave who's been watching our stuff for, gosh, several years now. And he's still calling up saying, hey, here's what I'm experiencing. What do you think? So you're right. It does take time. And really, the big thing is that a lot of folks who are doing this and finding success, it's not their main thing. And of course, you said you spent years on a cruise ship, which I was going to ask you, spending time on that cruise ship, where was your favorite? Like, did, did you wind up developing a favorite place where you got to go and when you had your off days or whatnot, you liked to port? Well, my situation is kind of unique. Um, as a, I, I would fly into a ship. I worked all over the world. Um, so as far as finding a favorite place, I really don't know. I think how, being home is my favorite place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, my, my situation, I would fly in. I only did one show a week. And uh, I would fly in, do the show, and then, uh, you know, have to stay a few days maybe, but then I would fly home. And that, that was kind of my routine. That's what I did. But I want to go back to that mule just because this is something that we talk about almost every week. I let that, that was a really, the one that ran away with me basically was a really, really nice mule. And, the, and I probably could have had that mule forever, but I did no groundwork. I knew nothing about groundwork. And my, my thoughts back then was kind of like horse thinking. Uh, I got it to where I could put a saddle on it, a bit in its mouth. And if you can get in the saddle, you're pretty much on your way. Whereas if I'd have taken that mule, and I feel badly about this too, because that mule really was a good mule, but I, he had had no real groundwork. And had I met Steve before, uh, and we talked about this, uh, I, it probably could have, I could have saved that mule. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's the groundwork. Dude. Groundwork, groundwork, <laughs> groundwork. I'm a big believer. I mean, that's well, all there is to it. We talk about it a lot. A lot of folks will say, oh, I got this, well, we call him a butt mule, but I got this mule coming. He's done there. He's done this. He's been here. He's been there. But, so there's some mm -hmm. sort of a problem. And almost always we come back to, look, I don't care where you got this animal. I don't care what they said the animal was able to do. You want to take that animal and immediately start working on groundwork, building a foundation. It's going to be about six months. And here's the thing. Maybe that animal does have a good foundation. You'll be able to get your threes. You'll be able to get your six, nine, and 12. You'll be able to get those in and you'll be able to move on and progress. But that groundwork, you never graduate groundwork. We've got Steve who, you know, will bust out a, a come along rope and do some groundwork right in the middle of a session because the animal's not listening. And so you get that come along rope, you reestablish, hey, you're going to listen to me, ask, tell, demand. And then you're able to move into some of the other things that you're doing, but you're going back to the groundwork. Um, yeah, that's incredible. So now... So you, so they're flying you in. This is they're they know they've got a big shot now. They said we're going to fly this guy in here, uh, jet travel only. And so now you actually, uh, what did you say before? You got a first love of your life, second love of your life, and it's a what? Did, what did you say? Jesus Christ, number one. My wife, number two, and uh, I guess music and mules and. Kind of, the, there's a balance there. I don't know. Hot rod cars. <laughs> hot rod cars. Now, he loves hot rod cars. He's got a 32 Ford that is just gorgeous. I got to drive. And the other one was a 35, 35 Ford. I got to drive, and which was great. I went down to his coffee shop, okay? And, uh, and, and we, we can keep on talking mules. But what I want you guys to get an idea of... of uh, there he is in praise. There's the coffee shop. Yeah. Okay. Real quick. Oh, what, what, what's this right picture. here? That picture is the mule that, that, that I didn't know what I had. That's my first mule. Okay. That's Marcella. And, uh, we, uh, that's a parade. And what we're doing there is we're handing out coffee. I was the Juan Valdez of our little town of Sonoy, Georgia at the time where I live. And, uh, there's poor Marcella <laughs> being the pack mule carrying the coffee. That picture is a uh, drying coffee actually after it's uh, been harvested. And then this one right I, here, this is, this is you and your element today, right? 
Well, that's yeah, that's our our coffee shop now. We have a uh, we've been through a couple of them, but uh, this is where Steve and uh, Susan and I were the other day. So there's a that's my coffee roaster. Yeah, so right let's here. Talk, yeah, let's talk that, a little about this, Steve. Get get into it there. Yeah, yeah that this is the key right here, folks. Uh, until I started drinking coffee that was only about three days from roasting. I, I, I mean, I've always enjoyed coffee, but now that I've had coffee that's been freshly roasted and it's fresh, listen, most of the stuff on the shelf today is pretty old. Pretty old, you know, yes. But the, you know, the, the thing with Dave's coffee is David roasts his coffee. And as you can see, all the buckets, big buckets in the background, there's coffee there from Peru, from we import from about 15 different co uh, countries and uh, the green beans and then we roast them and the uh, the the whole freshness thing is about when you when you have uh, coffee in the green state green beans you can keep for quite a long time but the minute you roast coffee you have a, a freshness window of uh, 10 days and uh, it doesn't go bad after the 10 days but you lose that that flavor uh the big bang for the buck uh in that 10-day window so what we do we ship coffee all over the united states and so what we do is we roast to order so we roast and ship out the same day and uh that's the, we're fanatical about fresh coffee so dave we got some pictures of, of coffee beans there i i sent you i don't know if you can see it with yeah so tell us a little bit about that. Okay, that's the degrees of roast as you go. At the top left corner there, that will be your green bean. And then progressively as it gets darker, uh, that's the roasting process. And so uh, say the second line or the first part of the, the third line there of beans, that will be your kind of your medium roast. And then you'll progressively get darker until you get into the uh, dark roast or French roast, as they call it, or city roast. They got a lot of names for it, but uh, that's, that's kind of the that's the man roast. The, yeah, the the but, man is the bottom right. That is, ass ass coffee will be about your middle of the second line. Uh, the uh, tell will be the middle of the third, and then the right hand corner for the uh, demand. So, um, what so what so what's your preference then? If you're if you're picking out what you like to drink, what's your preference? I change all the time. My palate changes. Uh, some mornings I'll wake up and I'll uh, let's for, uh, you know, I'll ask for something milder, lighter. It'd be like ask, and then some days it's tell, and then some days it's demand. Yeah, you know, it's just it's all over the place. I like a variety. Yeah, I, and that's I a like good a answer. Too. You know, but I want to be woke up. Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's a there's a point that a lot of people don't understand. The uh, the coffee that is the, the lightest roasted, the light roast coffee has more caffeine in it than the dark roast coffee, wow. because as you roast coffee, you actually roast out some of that, um, wow. uh, that uh, caffeine. It's a misconception. Most people oh. think when I see that coffee, well, the oil and the darkness and all that, I want that big bang of the buck and that's going to go right into the bloodstream and I'm going to, it's going to wake me up. Well, actually the light roast coffee is what's going to really wake you up. So right here, this is what this this right here at the top. This is what you would recommend for me, a father of three boys, all under the age of twelve. Yeah, you need you need to be very close to the beginning of the second line. Should I just eat them raw? Is that what I should be doing? Yeah, you probably should. To get it into your system faster, I would. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, I tell my my boys. Um, so at right now they are uh, six. Um, six, nine, and 11. And they look at me and my wife and we've been married 17 years now. And, uh, they say, why do you drink so much coffee? And I said, you know, I never used to drink coffee. You didn't? I said, no. I said, but then you were born. And <laughs> now Good you were born. And now it's one cup of coffee for every child that bears my last name. And so that's three normally. But if I'm feeling particularly uh, low on energy, then I'll go to my nieces and my nephews and I'll load up that way. So um, real fun. So you said that right now you're in the middle of animals. I know that um, 
I know that it's been tough for you. You've actually had you you've mentioned both animals that they passed away, but um, I think you had said one of them was from uh, sarcoids and another one from cancer, and that's got to that's got to be real difficult. I know we have some folks who have uh, watched recently who they've had their mules pass away, and like you're saying, Steve, when it's in the DNA, um, that's that's quite the process. Um, would you be okay just sharing a little bit about that process and maybe you know just your perspective and what what that's meant to you and other people who are watching, you know? The which the, the, uh, about your process, like losing them and with the you death. Know, yeah, we, well, and, you know, we, if you're if you're an animal person, that's it, you you enjoy them. You you uh, it's a journey, uh, but you know, it, sooner or later it comes to an end. Uh, we've had horses for a long, long time and, you know, uh, over the years had to put them down or they got old or whatever. So, I mean, it's, it doesn't make, it's never any easier. It's always the same. Um, but, uh, but if you love them, you, you get, you jump back in and, uh, I'm ready to jump back in. I mean, I, yeah. it's just, I don't know, uh, my mule, uh, it was kind of unique because she died of a cancer that, uh, we took her to Auburn, Alabama university and they have a, fantastic uh, veterinary school there uh, and they uh, after she, they put her down they went through her and the cancer was a rare cancer and it was uh, a cancer I can't remember the name of it but uh, some dogs get this kind of a cancer and very very few equine so they uh, we left her there so they could actually teach students about that cancer so um, it was sad but it was a good thing too because the students will be able to uh, learned from that experience. And uh, so anyway, that's that. But uh, yeah, and then but I love meals. I'm ready to go back. See, here's the thing, Dave, you see, he, he's got, he's got hot rods. He's got, he's got his wife in Christ, you know, and his wife. Uh, and uh, he's got, they just moved. They sold their farm and moved to Manchester and started a new business there, a new coffee shop. Plus they're very involved in the, in the, in the uh, Manchester area, they they want to be part of the community, and they're very very involved. But he still has this this heart, and this is a true mule person, okay? A true mule person. Even though they got all that going on, that mule still brings them back to life. I mean, to you know, to to a quiet life. Uh, there's something about to touch one how it changes you, you know? Really I mean, you can touch a hot rod and hit that accelerator and it's exhilarating. And it's exhilarating when one takes off and you're trying to hold its head over here, you know? It yes. is. But there's something about leaving the life as we know it every day, the everyday life, going to work, uh, families and all this sort of thing, and taking that mule and put a saddle on it and put the bridle on it and climb on and just go off and ride the whole, whole it's a whole nother world it really is there's nothing like it and, and, and this man is what, one thing i want to point out is he's experienced life fullest i mean going on cruises been all over the world you know being on airplanes lots of excitement you know uh he's uh, him and his wife been married 40 uh, 31 31 years yeah, we gotta get that number right we gotta get that one right <laughs> I, i've got 31 years you know so you know you got all these things that he's involved in, David, or Dave, and then you know, but that mule, there's something about the quietness of of saddling, going out and catching that mule, saddling and riding him, and then going off for a two, three, four hour ride through the woods and just relaxing. All that hectic world that that's out there that this man has gone through that he does, you know. And then all of a sudden that meal takes him out of that world and gives him some comfort, you know, mm -hmm. a, a whole new, whole different perspective and a way to collect your mind up. And folks, that's what I want you to get an understanding. Here's this. I want you to get this in your mind that this meal takes you out of the real world and puts you in a world of relaxation, uh, in, in a world of you just mean you and that meal, you know, and that's why I keep telling you, why are you getting in a hurry? Why you want to hurry up and ride? Why not spend the time and get to know that mule and smell it, huh, Dave? Oh, yeah. You know, you know, it, the riding, folks, is you've heard me say it, the icing on the cake. Why not get to know your mule? Ain't that phenomenal? You had 20 years. Yeah. 
20 years that he had, okay? And and that, that was it's a deep love affair, all right? It was. And then he's got some other meals. He's been hurt. He's been bounced around, this sort of thing. But there's something about that meal. So when you get that meal, folks, don't get in a hurry to ride. You know, spend time on the ground. Go out and, and pet and scratch on them. They've taken you out of that world. Most of your worlds isn't as hectic as this guy's. I mean, it, you know, of course, you're not flying and stuff. Not and now. Not so now. Much, yeah. But when I when I first got to know him, you know, but here he is starting a new business. He got a, a new home and he's got his hot rods. He bought this one new hot rod and, you know, and his life in Christ and all this stuff. But yet that mule is the kind of the, 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 the nucleus to, to kind of hold all yeah. that together. Yeah. It is, folks. And if what I'm, the point I want you to get across is, love that meal. Spend that time. An, an old cowboy buddy of mine up at the Grand Canyon, he, he told me, he says, Steve, a meal will give his life for you if you just spend time with him. He'll, he'll love you. It's mm-hmm. amazing mm-hmm. that relationship. A true meal person isn't just that he has a meal. It's not that. It's that he has a relationship where this mule is part of his DNA. Folks, that's what those mules do to you. They do, you know, and 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 it's just like that old cowboy saying, you know, uh, you know, they'll give their life for you if you just treat them right, you know. And, and it don't take much, but why get in a hurry? Why, you know, right. take, take your life and forget about all that's going on and just take that mule out and do your groundwork, take your time, pick up the feet, you know, uh, it's 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 an awesome thing to do, you know. And there's nothing wrong with on a windy day when you'd like to ride, and all those monsters out there blowing around. Nothing wrong with taking a brush and just brushing one. It's the riding isn't always important, you know. So that's 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 kind of the point I want to get across. Having David Pingali here, yes, he's the father of the Ask Tell Demand Coffee. His his wife kind of developed that too, and she's a mover and a shaker. Okay. Uh, but but the point I want to get across to is, folks, take if that meal really is part of your life, then you're going to want to spend time with it, even though all heck's breaking loose, and this meal will change your life. They will. They will. Yeah. 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 yeah, we hear about that all the time. All the time, folks, sharing. And <clears throat> one of the fun things that we do on the Facebook page, so if you're not following us on Facebook, you can go check it out. Um, And we do it on Instagram somewhat too, but we share pictures of folks. We ask for folks to share pictures of their mules and just the stories that folks have about uh, the memories that they've done, the places they've gone together, the bonds that they've formed. Uh, It's real and it's meaningful and, uh, and it's, it's significant. And, um, and so it is fun to get to hang out and it is fun to uh, just enjoy it together. And, and I want to challenge you, like, go for that, go for that type of bond. And you know what? Uh, the the longer it takes and sometimes the harder it, it is, uh, the more meaningful it'll be when it eventually comes. The the journey truly is, you know, I'm getting a little, you know, s- s- philosophical here, but, you know, I turned 40 last year and just turning 40. Oh, my God. 40, 40. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, Steve, Steve said that I'll be a young man until they put me in the grave. So I guess that puts me in the same the same bucket as yeah. you guys. We're all young men here, but you know, you turn 40 and you just start thinking like, what have I, you know, what, what have I done? Or, you know, what am I doing and what am I going towards? And I'm like, you know what? It, that's really not it. It's, it's these moments that I have with the things that are most important to me and being fully present in those moments. And I'll tell you what, um, I am not a cowboy. I am not a, a, um, a farm guy. Like I, I grew up in the city, but I'll tell you what, when you get out there, in those moments where life slows down and you're surrounded not by cell phone towers, but by trees, you know, you're surrounded not by uh, radio waves, but just the sound of nature. And wherever you're riding, whatever you're doing, all of a sudden, it it just invites you to be present in the moment. And I think that is that is where we see Jesus do his most incredible work is in the moment. And I think that's ultimately where we find uh, some of the greatest joy is just living fully in that moment and embracing it. And so I appreciate you sharing that with us today, uh, David. And I appreciate you sharing a little bit of uh, of your story. Uh, Steve sent this over here to me. Uh, Steve sent this over here, showing you 
at work right there doing your thing. What do we got here? Are we roasting right now? We're roasting there, and it's just about ready to come out of the roaster, I think. Uh, How long has it been in there? Uh, about 15 minutes. Oh, that's all it takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a short, small roast. So that's the. Uh, go. Here we go. Here we go. There we are. Ooh, I'll bet it smells awesome. Oh, it, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the, the, the fragrance of mules. You don't get tired of that. And the fragrance of coffee. You don't get tired of that either. I'll tell you what, uh, the pastor at my church, he was talking about uh, expectation and he was talking about uh, anticipation. And he says there's different types of anticipation. And, and you know, when we anticipate, the re- like, the, what is it to anticipate the return of Christ and what he's doing in our life? And, of course, there's the there's the uh, the the waiting when it comes for, you know, am I going to pass the test or am I going to get in or or what are those test results going to be? Or, you know, what was the biopsy? And there's this anxious waiting, but there's also, there's this brownies in the oven waiting, right? Where you know what's coming. You've, the work's been done. It's been put in and you can't take it out too soon. Cause if you take it out too soon, you're going to have to go back and remix it again. And, and you're roasting these beans and, and you put them in there. And if you pull them out too soon, you're not going to get the roast that you want. And that's, mm-hmm. that's ultimately, I think, what, what we can be invited into is there's this waiting, there's this expectation. And when you get into that moment, just live fully in that moment, but enjoy that ride all along the way. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Anything yeah. else you all want to say before we're done here? No, pretty much. Yeah. I, I just, I, you know, Dave, uh, now, uh, folks, uh, David and I were just talking today about uh, – you know, me and, and the training of the mules and things like this. And it's pretty cool, you know, but here's the thing, uh, this here, uh, interview and the internet. And then of course, you know, Dave, uh, uh, is if it wasn't for this sort of thing, it, it wouldn't be, it, uh, this information wouldn't be getting out there because we touch a lot of countries and things like this and people are seeing it different ways. You know, I've got belt buckles of being, uh, you know, the the top of the top and this sort of thing. But that doesn't mean as mean as much to me as this. You taking your time, you spending time with that meal, building a relationship. You're already a predator. They're a prey animal, so it's already against you. Why get in a hurry to ride? Why get in a hurry to give it some trainer and say fix the problem? <laughs> pardon me and it comes back to you worse than a problem and so you know uh I, we've I, i'll spend the time with you you've you've heard me say time and time again call me and i'll help you out i'll do it uh you know a guy like david pingali here he's uh multi-talented and all kinds of stuff but it's it's something about touching that mule and taking you out of reality and putting you in a world that's relaxing and easy to go and that's that's what I. That's what I want to get a point across. And Dave, uh, Dave Shrine here, my the, my media guy, my my second son has uh, taken and and uh, brought this all into place, and which is really cool, you know, because uh, normally I would have been on the ranch or just writing writing articles for different things. And this thing here, I mean, we have it's amazing. How many eighteen thousand was it, Dave, on that one uh, oh, program was- that where it went viral? Yeah, yeah. No, it was like 260,000 people watching. We got another one that was like uh, 700,000 people watched. And so, uh, you know, we're happy to do it, you know, for 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 one. Like, that's why Steve's on the phone. We're happy to do it for one. But the fact that there's that many folks out there, you know, have, have we reached all the mule people yet? I don't think so. No, no. But anyway, Dave, I appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate my buddy. David Pengalli here. We're gonna go right. have a cup of coffee now. And I'll uh, tell you I'm, what, I'm while y'all are, while y'all are still there, you ought to come up with a, a levels of confirmation, right? Get different, like put it out there. Level one confirmation, uh, level two confirmation. We come up with our own little chart there, and we'll send that to yeah. Mister Pengalli, and we'll say, "Hey, here you go. Here's your levels." <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I climb on an airplane and we fly into to, to uh, Nashville, 
and then we fly uh then we drive to to uh shelbyville, shelbyville. yeah and uh, dave won't be able to come he's got his coffee shop newly opened shop coffee shop uh to get open saturday and people depend on him uh for saturday for that, that saturday morning meal coffee you know oh and yeah so absolutely. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in touch i'll send you some more videos and stuff you know but we appreciate you buddy that's great. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to do it. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. With us. We sure are happy. MuleRanch.com, if you want to find any of the, well, I guess we haven't really done it a whole lot uh, a whole lot this time, but if you want to find any of our resources, and just so you know that the resources themselves, they are free. There's so many resources that you can go find at muleranch.com. Of course, you can fo follow us on any of the uh, Instagram, YouTube, all those places. A matter of fact, if you're on Instagram and uh, YouTube, you might really appreciate following us. We've got daily shorts that are coming out, just small, you know, 10 to 60 second clips of uh, different programs we've done, different training Steve's done. You'll find that. Of course, if you have any questions, you can send them in, support at muleranch.com, or you can reach out to Steve uh, Steve at MuleRanch.com. But that's it for us now. God bless. Take care, everyone. Shelbyville, if you're not there for this year, get there for next year. Shelbyville for the American Mule and Bluegrass Festival. Look it up. God bless, everyone. Bye-bye.